Sassler says, could be the Gus show and I'm in. I'm in too, Sassler. Welcome to the backup uh, sponsored by the most evil person we know, Nick Boy, for not being here today. Yeah, I changed the script. Changed what of it? He's script? not here to fix it. What the hell? Uh, no, of course not, Nick Boy. I mean Evil Spy Boy. Thank you very much to Evil Spy Boy. Get your exclamation mark Spy Boys out in the chat because thanks to his generous Patreon support, Evil Spy Boy is bringing you the backup and he's hoping you bring generosity to Food Bank Australia. Food Bank, if you didn't know, is Australia's largest food relief organization providing 88 million meals a year. That's 2,000... Ah, damn numbers. Damn, so That's 241,000 meals a day to mm. more than 2,600 charities around the country, accounting for 79% of all food received by charities from food rescue organizations. That's a lot of stats for a Monday morning and mm -hmm. let There's them all sink in. Make sure you had a big breakfast full of food so that actually <laughs> sticks into your brain. Uh, food Bank provides regular breakfast to more than 132,000 students at schools around the country and on top of this, more than 200,000 children who seek food relief from charities every month. You can donate uh, at foodbank.org.au and you can check in the night bot by giving an exclamation mark spy boys out there as well. Head to tasteofmultifish.com for more info as well. Thank you to Evil Spy Boy uh, for bringing us the news uh, and for bringing it to you too as well. This is of course the backup to where we talk about the most hard hitting news that has been around in the week as long as it relates to video games. And we'll kick things off first of all in the world of subscription services because mm, I need more of them in my life. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Sony might be going the way of uh, Microsoft in terms of providing PlayStation with a subscription service. Uh, news leaked of a service codenamed Spartacus that will provide a uh, well, that will Wait, rival. I'm Spartacus. Hmm? You're, but no, no, no. I'm I'm Spartacus, and so is my wife. Oh, <laughs> well, this is just confusing. Well, this is going to be very confusing to the listeners and everyone else as well. Uh, Codename Spartacus, this looks like a subscription service to rival Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass that uh, has leaked uh, information that it looks like Sony might be amalgamating, one of my favorite words, uh, the PlayStation Plus service with PlayStation Now, uh, essentially providing a, an online subscription service for both new games and old uh, Sony PlayStation games as well. Uh, this was leaked. Uh, I love this, but it was uh, it was leaked uh, by some people who asked not to be identified because they weren't authorized to speak to the press about <laughs> the plans, which is, of course, what they did for this news to get out. Uh, so, yes, this has long been rumored as a something that Sony hasn't really had in the same vein of Microsoft. It's been their big player. Peter, we love Game Pass. Uh, will we Sorry. love PlayStation? Plus the deluxe edition, if if it's out there, will you pay for it? Uh, I think if they, um, I think they'll bundle it in in similar ways, and I think some of the information that came out suggests that they will. In mm. that, uh, it's a it's like I'm going to be a multi tiered structure where tier one includes all your online, so that's kind of where it will be basically PlayStation Plus. And yep. then, and then deeper tiers will include a, a larger suite of backwards compatible or or forwards compatible titles. You'll be playing games from the future <laughs> yeah. with this one. Um, <laughs> one thing that it didn't specify was, uh, or that it suggested didn't it wasn't going to feature was uh, first party games being their day one, which is yeah, I think the actual sell of Game Pass, not uh, this huge catalog of games that you might play. Um, mm. because in the same way of the Netflix effect, it's nice to see that you have all those games to play, but how many do you actually go and play? Like when you, yeah. if you step back and look at the actual value of the games that you're playing through this pass, I think, I think you play two games a year and you're getting your value out of it. Um, so I, I would I, say, yeah, to that point as well with the Netflix sort of comparison, more so with gaming. It's mm. very easy to justify to see one game on the Game Pass that you would have paid for full retail price and say, well, I may as well have spent that on the service. So something like Halo is coming out, it's going to sell really well or in the sense that a lot of people are going to play it. People can justify that that would have been 80, 90 bucks if they went and buy, bought it. Why not pay for that and then get four to five and everything else that comes out throughout the year? So yeah. in that sense, putting your, you're right, putting a first party, putting a big uh, day one sellers up there as well helps you justify it and get on board with it versus seeing a back catalog, the Nintendo style, I guess, almost. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's it taps into the nostalgia, but it's harder to justify that, especially once you pay for that first one, look in there and go, I had a dabble. There's nothing else I want to go back to. So whether or not that's something they're thinking of as well, I, I personally don't 
like what they were talking about. We don't have have PlayStation now in Australia, I believe. That's the one that's more of the the streaming service, the cloud. Correct. Kind yeah, of yeah. Based. I don't yeah. think it ever made it here fully. I think Not they did fully, some no. testing and then abandoned it. Yeah, and so uh, for us, it. it's less of a less of a oh, it's a combination of that. But again, they, they've the the rumors mentioned that they're going to keep the the plus branding um, because that's yeah. the thing that put so much sort of uh, brand recognition behind. Personally, though, I don't I love the idea that the oh yeah, that's true. Uh, me, the golfer, and you, the dodgeballer. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't love the idea that already they're talking about or they're rumored to have talked about breaking this up into tiers. I think that's the problem with a lot of subscription services. It's like simplifying them is what I think makes them broadly appealing and more they become ubiquitous. They become something that you just keep on the burn. Like yeah. the more I look at something and think, which tier am I at? What do I want? Which services? The more you can simplify that, at least for me, I think that's what is appealing. Uh, and looking at PlayStation Plus, PlayStation games with not games. What do they have? They have, they also have the like services ones. The way Xbox has games with gold, which is rumored to probably yeah. slowly go away. It's like you need to break away all those other parts. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, like Game Pass also has that with like the ultimate version and the standard version and stuff as well. That's and, true. That's and there, true. I think there's a, there's a standard version for Xbox and a standard version for PC. And then there's Ultimate, which is all of them, it, which is like across both platforms. And you get the plugins of like, you get access to the Xbox streaming, the X Cloud, and all mm. that stuff. So like, <clears throat> I think they pack in a bunch of features to make them feel really feature rich. And again, they're these things that you just like might use. It's the same mm. way that the Amazon Prime's subscription feels like such a massive value add even though you use 20 percent of the things that it offers you like which one are you using less are you doing it for shopping and then sometimes watching tv or are you watching tv and sometimes buying bulk toilet paper <laughs> i would say that i'm sh i i do a lot of shopping on amazon now and we watch yeah, prime okay. we, we definitely watch like the, the like prime exclusive things but you also yeah. get your twitch uh sub so you that's get right, access yeah. to a bunch of um, stuff from a bunch of video game titles. It's like, here's your Amazon Prime monthly Destiny exotic skin. And it's oh, like, God. oh, cool. There's like, there's just stuff. And like, you don't, I, I just forget about all the Prime gaming stuff. Yeah, like, true. I, it just doesn't sit in my brain. And it's like so unimportant. But also when you remember, you're like, ah. It's worth keeping that twelve dollars subscription. Um, You're right, um, I guess. Yeah, so. and they they have talked about there yeah, with all those tiers that there are a multitude of services that they are trying to sort of package together and make optional for people to purchase. Overall, though, I think like uh, it's about time. I think you know this is where I think yeah. we're just looking at the future of digital content libraries is going. It's like it's it's to segment it up into per individual purchases just doesn't sort of carry the same amount of audience sort of excitement that I think now a subscription service in a day and it's an expectation as well I think now that's what people are kind of hoping to, to get out yeah. of a, a service that uh, someone likes I think well, the one thing it does do, do is buck against the idea that I mean Sony have never particularly I don't think have spruced but um, Nick has brought up a few times of like Sony presenting as like a premium video game company and, mm. and where Game Pass is a little more like open season, it's like get what you can, uh, and what uh, what a service like this does, and I think why. And again, nothing official has been announced, um, but why we w might not see first party titles day one on this service is again them trying to keep the idea of this pre the prestige behind the titles that they're yeah. making in their first party studios, um, which I think would be very damaging to a subscription service. Uh, and I think they need to be either all in or not bother and lean harder in the other direction of being the, the, the people that make God of War and it's the only place you can get it. It, but, it is funny in the sense that we talked about it with like even the mantra behind the console and it's like even its design and stuff. It's like the Xbox wants to slide under your TV and just become a service that you just don't think about that you have all the time. Yeah. PlayStation wants to sit there and be like, remember me? And then same thing with like the game comes out. It's like, I want to go and buy that box <laughs> copy and like get my Death Stranding Ultimate Edition, you know, and a director's with cut or something like that giant life-size baby in a box thing yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so either way uh whichever way they choose to go with it could be interesting in terms of where we go in 2022 if this is 
as rumoured to be true in the way that uh, it's been reported, but uh, something to keep an eye out for the PlayStation Plus subscription service. Uh, moving on from subscription services to subarctic temperatures. How do you like oh. that one? Uh, the next Bioshock uh, is rumoured to be happening in the Arctic. How's that for a segue? Uh, journalist Cor- Colin Moriarty. Moriarty? Moriarty. Moriarty. Yeah, he, that's a name you can trust. Um, has relayed some details on 2K Games' uh, next Bioshock project, um, and it was previously confirmed to be in development at a new studio, Cloud Chamber. Um, and in this video, uh, he cites uh, numerous sources claiming that their take will uh, their take on the Bioshock sequel will um, happen in a fictional Antarctic city somewhere during the 60s. Uh, it's going to be uh, rumored to be called. Uh, it had a cool name. What was it again? I'm just scrubbing the article. I really liked it. I can't believe I can't find it. It was called <laughs> Borealis. Bo- called Borealis uh, yeah. is the rumored uh, the setting for the next Bioshock game, um, and that that will, uh, in theory, tie it together in somehow to uh, the original Bioshock's Rapture um, that was underwater. So that is the uh, the rumor of where this one is taking place. Um, and they've been given apparently incredible latitude to get the new Bioshock right. Um, and they are basically saying they're throwing everything into this. Uh, and this is without um, the original creator uh, of Ken the- Levine. Ken Levine. Um, who was, but he's, he's currently working on his own thing, I believe. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's this, this is exciting. Yeah. In ter- I don't know if I, I love the idea of this setting as much, but th- I think I would have said the same about the Sky City setting until I got to play it and really see it in the trailer that we're seeing here for Bioshock Infinite. It's like yeah. they always do such an amazing job of making these places feel so realized, even if they are, you know, incredibly dystopic, that kind of thing. Uh, I hate ice levels, though, so I don't know if I'm going to love the Arctic. Uh, I don't know. Would it, and after the bright, sunny skies of Infinite, do you want to go to the snow, Pete? I'm and- still just caught up on, uh, and and maybe there's something lost in translation of article or something, but Antarctic City, but Borealis? Mm-hmm. Aurora well, then Borealis the headline, is the, the headline I've got. The headline I have here is the Arctic. Um, so... And Antarctica the Arctic- is the Southern Ta- Pole. Correct. So- which would be Aurora Australis. So it should That's be a- called Bioshock Australis. Uh, Bioshock Australis. <laughs> <laughs> Come down under and <laughs> Come on down under gone. and freeze your tits off. <laughs> it's, the, it's the real down under. Come to Australis. <laughs> That's a very good point. Uh, this could just be things that think, are like I lost I think it's probably the Arctic because, you know, Yanks do yeah. what Yanks do. They want polar That's bears. True. You want polar pe- bears. Adelie penguins are adorable, but you want polar bears in this thing. But there are penguins up north too, just not the same type, right? I don't know the I don't know Chat- the full Chat can let us ecology know, but- of the Arctic. <laughs> <laughs> you and, would have to this- assume polar bears be eating some little seals and some penguins from time to time. Well, my assumption as a Bioshock game is that this will take place mostly under water in like glacial palaces no penguins, and things. No penguins, only seals in the north. So no penguins up there. Do you reckon the if you snuck some- by, by the next Bioshock? Do you reckon if you introduced penguins to the Arctic up north, they would know? <laughs> it's such a bleak and like similar landscape that they'd just be like, this seems right. Like, this is what I was made to be. I reckon you could sneak a few up there and they wouldn't even know. Which yeah. is my friendly way of introducing species, just <laughs> tricking them into going places. Uh, but You're back on topic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a very they good just point. Hit, they just hit a glass wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. I, like, I agree that, uh, I mean, under when you think about underwater as well, though, it's like, how much can you do underwater? And they managed to make two games set in rapture yeah and when and then city in the clouds it's like how much can you do in a city in the clouds they are building cities in these locations so they they're still capturing the uh and the thing that was so that is so um wonderful about the bioshock games is that they are that uh the era brought to life like a mm. 
a, an unrealized future of the 60s. You that know? kind of took a left turn at one yeah. point and went a different direction and has that like, yeah, it, it's dystopia in the sense that they were, it's not just the regular world crumbled. It's like this new version fell apart because it shouldn't have gone that way kind of thing, which is always the kind of haunting cool part about it. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in the idea that I think Infinite puts such a great kind of, pin in the story or like you know it, it finished a story that wasn't originally going in that direction when the first bioshock was was written i assume as much i think we can assume from the first bioshock was a great self-contained adventure um and then the second one was like oh we're heading back to play in this realm and then infinite comes along and he's like hey let's what if we w go back and retroactively kind of bring in all these parts of it and have this very mm -hmm. uh wonderful and and you know spoil no spoilers i'll say like a very interesting ending that ties it all together i i wonder that's for me the bigger concern less about the location less about the how they realize the setting and more about how do you keep retreading those boards i guess it was that like be infinite infinite gave the uh gave the series literally infinite scope and in doing that gave it a bit of closure it's like mm. you could you could go on from the back of infinite and tell a billion stories or none <laughs> so yeah. it's weird it's just it, it is odd to make another one because then suddenly like well now you just have to keep making them and loki cat in the chat makes <laughs> a good point that open. the yeah, the uh, Infinite did have DLC where it went back underwater and it yep. did play around with the idea that at the end of Infinite, you did see elements of, um, I can't want to say Anne Rand. It's not Anne Rand. It's it's Ryan. <laughs> who, uh, uh, Andrew, what's his name? Andrew Ryan? I think it was Andrew, Andrew. Ryan's. No. Isn't Andrew Ryan no, the right. EA boss? <laughs> uh, maybe? The Australian one? Yeah. No, Andrew yeah, Ryan. Man. Andrew Ryan is a fictional Andrew character Ryan was... from the Bioshock series. He is. And... He is. And Andrew Wilson <laughs> is the Australian who works for, is the CEO he owns, of Electronic Arts. He owns the other horrible dystopic giant <laughs> business. Um, yeah, no, the, the idea that they did go back there because there were hints of it in the end of Infinite and they went back in the DLC just because people were like, I need a little bit more. I need a little tasty morsel of where this was going to go. But you're right. I, I agree with you entirely, Pete, in saying that opening the door literally opening thousands of doors to say this story could go anywhere but we're not going to go to any of them and just leave that wonderful feeling glowing inside you versus okay well one of them was the arctic or the antarctic we don't know which show we went through <laughs> and you kind of like ah oh. so i'm i'm excited because i think that you know the style of bioshock as a game is very you know compelling and and uh, wonderful to play but i yeah i i'd be weirded out if i think we got any recurring characters i think this could be a nice sort of you know shadow of what the this series was doing story-wise but going in a different direction possibly um but who knows it's been a while since yeah. bioshock so people are ready probably for another one and i am uh i'm excited regardless to play more uh, dystopic ea office simulator um yeah for sure moving on uh from under the water to no, I got nothing for this one. Uh, I didn't write this one at all. Battlefield, Peter, uh, is becoming a connected universe, apparently. We're we're in the world of meta. The okay, there was something in Bioshock being connected spaces and universes, and we live in a world of metaverses. We you live in a society. To. And now the Battlefield franchise is the Battlefield franchise moving. is attempting to become a connected universe, Peter. Um, Lovely. This Perfect. is essentially after... Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, apparently, uh, EA is not only going to continue supporting the recently released Battlefield 2042, which is not a surprise, but they do need to do some pretty heavy support there, can, some damage control, I think. Uh, but they are now announcing plans to expand the franchise and create a connected Battlefield universe. Uh, this is after Respawn's co-founder, Vince Sampella, has been moved to oversee the Battlefield franchise. Um, Obviously, coming for some great pedigree, uh, Respawn, doing nothing wrong. Um, Battlefield, doing a few things wrong. Is an yep. expanded universe what the Battlefield franchise needs? <laughs> Absolutely. I think we would forgive all of the bugs in Battlefield if we just had a um, an anime about the robot dogs that are in Battlefield. Mm -hmm, I think if, mm -hmm. we could, if we could fall in love with uh, the personalities that they clearly have, uh, we could look past some of the shortcomings of the code in yep. Battlefield 2042. Um, so it is absolutely the right direction. I think they should move all of DICE onto that anime 
and uh, which means apparently they need to move to Japan because otherwise it's a cartoon, not an anime. Ah, uh, um, that's so true. Move dice to Japan. Step one: create yes. Robo Dog anime with all of dice. First animation they've ever made. Perfect. <laughs> this Suddenly, is your solution. Yeah, sell a billion copies of Battlefield 2042. There you go. Um, Andrew Wilson. Give me a call. These are these are uh, Andrew Ryan. Are, do not. Andrew Ryan, do not call. Uh, these are all great ideas. Unfortunately, none of those are being implemented. Uh, the ones that are being implemented at the moment is that we're seeing uh, the development of a Battlefield Mobile um, from mm. Industrial Toys, uh, which is obviously similar to things like Call of Duty doing a, a mobile version. Uh, I think when they are talking about an expanded universe or a connected universe, that is, for me, that comes off as jargon that is basically saying we will have a battle pass in our mobile game that will relate to our, our full PC or our full con uh, version battle for Battlefield 2042 and vice versa, something like that. Uh, that's mm. me being super skeptical, but I think I'm allowed to be at this point because the rest of this announcement is kind of jargony. It is all that stuff that says, um, if I'm reading it, it's 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 a lot of things that are saying we intend to build a battlefield universe, one with multiple projects that are all interconnected with the player at the center. This is again from um, Zampella from Respawn, um, which is, you know, it sounds like corporate wanky way of saying we're just going to keep trying new things. We're going to keep throwing shit at the wall and calling it battlefield related and hope <laughs> yeah. that one of these things fixes it. Um, but again, coming from respawn great pedigree in terms of you know where uh you know with things like titanfall and uh and uh the other one that everyone's playing apex legends apex legends thank you very much like uh yeah maybe that is giving them grounds to start uh i don't know to start fixing what people don't love about battlefield um but it's i don't think a mobile game is <laughs> no no i think this was just on the uh on the the business announcement slate uh for making sure the um the shareholders stay happy and yeah they had to do it i just don't think now is the time when you start announcing this shit when everyone who plays and loves battlefield is not happy with the state of battlefield um, it is strange isn't it to then announce so many sort of future forward projects even and, and as vaguely as this it kind of doesn't give you much sort of uh faith in the fact that they are going to support what's currently broken well, I think, I, look, I absolutely think they will. It's just, mm. it's just, don't, why are you telling me about this other shit when the shit that is out is broken? Mm. Fix the thing that, that is publicly available and you're selling to me before you start announcing and hyping up all this other stuff. And, you know, this is a pretty weak announcement like yeah. for, for people who love playing Battlefield. I think it's great that there's a mobile version of Battlefield coming. I think it's a smart business decision. There are plenty mm -hmm. of people, particularly in like non-Western countries that play games like this on their mobile phones, Call of Duty's, Fortnite's, PUBG on their mobile phone. And yep. for Battlefield to be there, I think is a no brainer. It's a, it's a, it's a clever thing, but it needs to work. And, uh, and their core game doesn't work right now. So the idea of going like, hey, Battlefield is like, still important to us and we're going to build this massive ecosystem around it. It's like, okay, but, but, but the planet is dying. <laughs> the planet <laughs> is dying right now. Fix the planet and then yeah. build out. So, yeah, I don't know. And I, I, again, I just think like that some of the broad terms that are used in this announcement uh, are things that like would make sense with different genres of games, with RPG, with like, I don't know, it's the way in which they're talking about these broad strokes of a connected universe with players bringing experiences from one to the other. The player I don't, in the center. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't really imagine anything more than just some cosmetic rewards and, and currencies being transferred back and forth between titles. Yeah, and it's where it ties into one of the big things that people are frustrated about with this, with 2042, is the idea of the um, the... Uh, operators, I think that's what mm. they call them in this, of like yep. you don't just have a loadout, you have an operator that has specific abilities and then the idea that they're going to be able to sell new operators, they're going to be able to sell skins for those operators specifically. So, everyone, yeah. everything looks cooler than it would on a generic body, but uh, it it is giving them options of going like, hey, your character that you've been putting time into and spent my and spent microtransaction time on in the PC version will translate across to the mobile version. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's 
I think from when EA says connected universe, they mean your credit card is connected to both of these services <laughs> and you don't need to do anything other than just install the app. It will just hit that big green buy button and it'll do it. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're sorted. I think you're spot on. It, it, and it does come off as just like awkward wording for this because I, I'm with you. I'm not against the idea of them expanding it to different, you know, a mobile title. And, and there's been rumor that um, uh, Dice LA who uh, have now are now called uh, Ripple. I believe, um, or Ripple Effect Studios. Uh, they're working on a yet to be announced project that'll follow Battlefield 2042. I don't know what that means, uh, but it's like, mm. yeah, there's still, you know, a, a, a roadmap as there should be with any big blockbuster title, be it like support for the current game or, or added things as we move forward. I just think the wording of this one and how it's been announced as a connected universe is really just getting on the bandwagon of your, your metaverses and, you know, Ubisoft doing it with Assassin's Creed Infinite and stuff like that. It's like games yeah. need to now, in theory, as a business model, be more than just <laughs> titles they need to be yeah yeah world. But, but when you hear assassin's creed infinite you're like i can see that yes like i can see i can see the desmond character being sent to different parts of his uh lineage and or even like, an rpg where the- you make an assassin and they bounce between different areas and have yeah it like exactly. as a multiplayer thing it could work as well but here i just think yeah as you said with battlefield Sorry, as I said, Battlefield, I don't see it. (laughs) If you were to interrupt yourself, you would say. That's true, but I interrupted you. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, no, it's fine. Uh, So, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm done. I'm done talking about Battlefield. (laughs) Uh, Fair enough. Well, we're done talking about Battlefield, but we're not done talking about uh, EA or more specifically Respawn or more specifically Titanfall because uh, news has dropped that Titanfall uh, has actually been pulled from digital storefronts and subscription services uh, on, or that will be, I apologize, will be pulled on March the 1st, 2022 uh, due to a large amount of hacking of um, DDoS attacks. Essentially, the original Titanfall is come under fire from uh, hackers and uh, people up to no good. Um, And through that- That are causing uh, trouble in the neighborhood. They are causing a lot of trouble in the Titanfall neighborhood. And so the game will be essentially pulled from digital stores um, early next year. Um, And that's essentially Respawn saying, I mean, throwing their hands up and saying to the cheaters, yeah, you've won because like they are just bombarding this game with uh, all sorts of stuff that include um, servers going down, um, hacks that apparently would cause players' games to crash, but also there were claims that it would uh, even sort of, uh, that would jeopardize the health of the, the players' PCs. Respawn have come out now and said that that's not the case, um, but they are some pretty serious uh, sort of things that have been probably scaring off the player base. Um, they obviously have Apex, they obviously have Titanfall 2. Um, I, I, I wonder if this coincides with the idea of how pop, how many people are on those servers. I'm sure there is still a hardcore player base who still enjoy this. I know that happens with games like that have a really cool following. Titanfall, the original, was just a multiplayer only game. The campaign was kind of tied to the multiplayer matches. It's great fun, but there is, as I said, Apex and 2 out there. Um, is this kind of just putting it out to pasture as well, do you think? Or like, not an excuse, but something else that just leads them to say, well, bugger it, there are, there are other games that in our franchise that people should be playing? Yeah, I think it, I, you know, obviously it sucks for the people who are enjoying the game, but I think it is something we're going to see become more and more common. Um, the, the costs of having server running are, you know, uh, are different between publishers, but mm. still always a a factor um and and the cost of having teams building and updating securities you know it's a constant battle i yeah. do not uh envy any studio that is releasing a multiplayer pvp game uh now or anywhere in the future because <laughs> because they need to have not only teams building the game but teams building security and te- and that security team is going to be the hardest working team from launch through the entire life of the title. Mm. Um, Destiny has trouble with it. Halo's already got trouble with it. Um, obviously, Titanfall has trouble with it. Anything that's on PC, people will try and break, and then security needs to find how it's broken, fix it, uh, and or fight back against it. Uh, and it's just it's. It just would be a money sink. And and then there's the equilibrium point where this where Titanfall has clearly tipped over into and you know, I I think you could look at 
cynically look at EA and go like, well, they're going to make that decision quicker than anyone. And that's a, a classic mm. EA move to just go like, you know, several ties were done uh, earlier than they necessarily should have or needed to. But it was inevitable, I think, that these games, their, their player bases start to dwindle and then they're spending a bunch of money and resources on making sure that there's no cheating happening in a game that no one is playing eventually. <laughs> So. It is that, isn't it? It's, it's weighing up the cost of what they are not making because obviously I think you get to a certain point in a game's life cycle where it is not going to be making you any more money or very little based on what's available and sure to purchase around the game and all that kind of stuff as well. But you do weigh up the cost of people getting uh, being part of, is it EA Play or EA Now or which one is a service that gives you you know, a bunch of titles, including this. And so at what point does having this in the roster of games outweigh, sorry, does does the cost of those up, upping those security measures or ma maintaining those security measures outweigh the the benefit of having this game in your roster? And I think, yeah, it, it's it's sad that it happens because uh, it's there are often little devoted player bases. I, for one, play a heap of Battlefield 1 because there are two Aussie servers that sit up that just are constantly in cycle. And I'll be really sad if a similar thing happens that they say, today is the day it has to go. Um, whether or not that's a life cycle thing because of other titles, I think here it's it's especially upsetting that, you know, that it has to be because, yeah, as a cost as a sort of sunken cost, they can't afford to, to maintain security because people are dicks. <laughs> sort of, yeah, yeah, I just- Miss, Miss Silver's in the chat and is actually still playing Titanfall and said, uh, Titanfall on 360 and Xbox One was surprisingly populated until the server issues this year. I can understand closing servers with an announcement, but this whole thing is just absurd. They're not even closing servers, but pulling everything from the store so they don't have mm. any obligation to fix the existing issues. Um, and It's a good and perspective, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not nice to hear, but there, there's some of the frustration from someone who still plays it, and mm. I'm sure would be true of the, all of the player base who's there who feels like EA abandoned the game earlier this year when they, you know, when it when it started having server issues and they haven't put in the time to fix that, and mm. and have instead just gone, let's pull the plug. But you know, this announcement is an announcement that was probably made back whenever those server issues started internally going like you know is this where we pull the plug and the answer would have been yes and then it took them three months to put this press release together <laughs> mm. <laughs> but you're right as from miss filver's perspective as someone who's like I I'm surprised that there was a decent, decent sized player base there. It's like we will now salt the earth. This game will not exist <laughs> anymore. Uh, well, it would be yeah. It's also that like the the PvP in Titanfall had a bunch of AI in it, so it was always fun to just run the, around yeah. and pop pilots or not pilots, whatever the AI were called. The little like robot grunts and stuff like that. Yeah. No, totally. So uh, Veil Titanfall 1, I guess, at this point. <laughs> um, but hey, Miss Silver, if you're looking for another shooter, a great shooter, uh, may I recommend, and I'm sure Peter will uh, second me in this, uh, this plug, a little bit of Halo Infinite because Halo are now adding uh, a couple of new playlists before the end of the year. Obviously, this will come after the full release on Wednesday or I guess Thursday here, um, AE... Whatever time, AE time, Aus Australis <laughs> time, down under time. Um, but uh, 343 have announced that they will be adding uh, a couple of extra playlists uh, to the rotation. Um, these ones at this point have been uh, outlined as Fiesta, uh, which is the sort of new... It's, it's kind of gun game, I guess, is one way to put it. It's rotating new uh, crazy weapons every death. Yeah. Uh, Tactical Slayer, or better known as SWAT, and a free-for-all playlist as well. So uh, all those lone wolves out there, like myself, can get around and uh, <laughs> just try and uh, top the scoreboard. But yes, this is uh, a bunch of new playlists that they're adding. I assume uh, this will be happening probably on release uh, this no, week in some way. No. Oh, they're, okay. It's going to be... It's It's probably going to be after christmas but before the new year there we go um, so that tiny window in there of when yeah. you're when you're tired of your family but you're gearing up for new years you can settle down <laughs> with a couple of extra playlists uh i don't think this is a big surprise pete but um in terms of how they're rolling it out do you think this is too not too late but this is a weird time to <laughs> the do the game's it? not even out <laughs> that's what i'm sorry not it's too late but i mean like <laughs> that's what, uh, but no yeah, it's totally a valid question because it is a weird launch um it it's been so interesting watching uh, like i think the sentiment of everyone who's playing halo is that it's amazing 
Mm. The game feels great. It's a lot of fun to play. Uh, there's Reddit is super mad, but Reddit is always super mad. Uh, <laughs> and it's just so weird that they like, I don't know, man, just they always try and find the worst in something and then and highlight it. And this has been mainly around the challenges and the progression of the battle pass yeah, stuff. Is which that what you're totally, referring to? Like, yeah. yeah, totally valid criticism of some of the systems that are in the game. But the the core game is is really functional and, and mm-hmm. they're still in the process of it's literally T minus three days till launch and <laughs> and then expect a long like a long, long Tail on Halo Infinite, you know, like totally. They're, they're talking about a decade, infinite. Some might even say <laughs> some might say infinite. They say ten years. Uh, okay. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> like, just slow down. Why is everything move? Why do people need to move so it's, fast? It's strange, isn't it? This well, I guess a bit of the backlash was around people saying there weren't enough of these playlists of these uh these optional. Play, players to go in on in what is essentially the beta is what we are playing now it is still technically a beta um yeah. and uh this is still 343 three, i think being very cautious about everything they're doing i mean cautious in the sense that they did go hey here's the multiplayer we dropped it early and um, like in terms of earning back cred of anyone who you might have been cons- like you might have had some negativity towards 343 for the issues they had on launch they had a really rocky start with master chief collection so it's like they are doing their best to be as cautious about this as possible that includes doing it a- as a beta that includes slowly working out their progression system i kind of i don't have a- as big a gripe with it as everyone does i can definitely see the criticisms where people are angry that it's changing the play style of people in matches to, to like prioritize challenges over playing the objective yeah. i haven't really encountered that or at least i haven't noticed it but i'm aware that that definitely could be a thing but in terms of what they're doing i like that it's not a straightforward carbon copy of your cods and your, your fortnite battle passes i like that it does feel like it's its own thing of halo and i Mm. think that they've already started retooling it with the every game gets you xp with the different you know uh you know first six to seven matches change the xp there so i think just seeing how receptive they are to the criticism but you're right a lot of butthurt redditors who are just kind of like everything makes me angry it's like just chill the fuck out and let them get the game out i pardon my french so early in the morning but it's just like (laughs) as you said this is as well like people going where are our playlists where are our playlists and they're like can't my pauldrons be yellow (laughs) <laughs> they're like just chill out the playlists yeah. are coming but we're gonna and, and i wanted to ask you this pete in mm. terms of they're gonna monitor or you know they're gonna very closely monitor the balance in these modes like free for all and that kind of stuff as well do you think like do you think there's a overly cautiousness to the way in which they're checking the balance on everything in the game and is that what's keeping it feeling good or do you think it needs a little bit of chaos injected in there as well like a few modes that you go this is batshit uh i think I think they need to they, like what their concern is, and uh, they've kind of now said it publicly is um, the idea of like, and it's always been a problem with Halo is that people enjoy Halo in different ways. And as soon as the player base starts to come down, at the moment it shouldn't be a problem, but as soon as the player base maybe starts to come down a little bit, your queue times, because you've they've fragmented the search. Uh, so much into different playlists and mm. maybe different regions and stuff. And I hope to see that you can search by your region uh, at launch. That still hasn't come up, but you can do it on Steam if you do some little tweaking. Um, yeah, right. But uh, yeah, the the thing is that no one plays objective modes, right? So it's like, oh, we only want Slayer. So it's like, where's the Slayer only playlist? And it's like, well, we haven't put that in there because if we do, then... The people that like playing objective games are never going to get a game because mm. no one's searching an objective. So it's like there's balanced stuff with that is where their biggest concern is, is just really spreading the player base too thin. I think they yeah, do okay. a good job with the events. I think the events make sense. It's like, why do you, who wants fucking Fiesta all the time? Yeah. It's, it's shit. Like it's, it's fun, but it's shit. Like it's not really Halo. It's just like a, a it's a dumb fun mode. And I would like mm. to see a dumb fun mode every week. Uh, but and like fiestas on a four week cycle or whatever it's like once a month fiestas up and then there's SWAT next week and there's infection Mm. next week and you can play these like the crazy modes that absolutely make halo bigger than uh, uh, just a shooter um these fun creative physics-based games um that they can build into their engine 
I think totally deserve a place, but they, but if they, I don't think they need to be there all the time. And if they are, they're not as interesting for people to jump into. And the player base is just too small and gets too spread too thin. So yeah, I think totally. It's, 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 work it's, quite, it's quite nice to be told what to play a bit. Like I'm enjoying just even going through ranked and like, I, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the capture the flag because it's just seems for me like one of the old fashioned modes that just seems to, I just hit, hit my head against a wall. But like in terms of if I was able to choose between Slayer, Oddball or Stronghold, I'd probably always pick Slayer, but I love how playing those other two modes makes me change up how I play the game. I love how Fiesta is teaching me about all the other weapons and mm. it's quite nice to have a limited scope. And I'm almost sort of savoring this moment uh, where it is. Everyone is that I'm finding heaps of matches with ease. It's like I'm playing modes that I wouldn't traditionally be drawn to. And I think there's something good in that. And I, I, I think limiting the scope at the beginning and just slowly disseminating everyone out into all the different modes is great because it just builds that that sort of structure that's there or that foundation that keeps people playing it all the time. Yeah. I do hate when like my CODs of the world turn into this huge player list and I'm like, cool, you've got a hundred new modes. You've got nightmare mode. You've got Nuketown 37. You've got plunder, but no one's playing plunder anymore because you've added this other mode. And I'm like, great. No one's playing any of these modes. They're all just going to the one or two that are at the top of it. And you've got all this superfluous crap underneath. So it's like, yeah, yeah if anything, take your time with this 343. They're, they've also reportedly, they're working on a social Slayer playlist, um, which was in Halo uh, uh, 3. And that was something you said that was really fun because that sort of like had your, you know, Team Rockets uh, and like sort of your fun versions of, I guess that kind of like, it's Slayer, but it had those fun modifiers, which make, which is what people remember probably from original Halo. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, that'll be, that's rumored to be launched maybe a bit further into next year. So it's all coming. It's just a question of like, just get good first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, are people's attention spans so short that mm. by the end of season one, where, you know, and part of the issue is that like, because they've built this battle pass that has, uh, challenges attached to different parts of events and things like that for them they they haven't coded it in a way that they can just turn a pl another playlist on that has yeah. these modifiers so they've uh they've they've worked themselves into a bit of a corner from that perspective which they need to work out and the reality is they're not gonna their focus right now is launching the game in three days and <laughs> yeah. then and then taking a holiday because <laughs> they've earned it. <laughs> So, you know, they're going to do that. They're going to have their Christmas break and then some poor team is going to come back in on Boxing Day and and build whatever fixes they can before the new year because now they've promised that, you know, we'll see new playlists before the end of the year. And then yeah. uh, and then I think it'll be it'll be really be season two, the start of season two and season three where we see some more f like changes at the foundation of the uh, progression system mm. and the cosmetic system. Um, yeah, but I think like- Season two or what it's more commonly being referred to is when it gets out of beta, essentially. It's like, <laughs> is it season two or is it like well, season, season two, one? <laughs> this is, yeah. Well, season one uh, to them is uh, started when they launched the beta and runs through to the end of February, I believe. And so okay. season two starts March 1st. And that's when they plan to have I think the start of season two is planned for the co-op campaign as well. Yep. And then season three would be forge mode uh, and hopefully a more fleshed out theater because theater is a little, well, or at least a refined theater because that's a little buggy at the moment as well. But. You are a man of culture, Peter. Let's not forget. I'd, I'd, li I'd like a more refined theater as <laughs> theater. well. If I could just have that. Uh, but still lots to look forward to there and Absolutely. no reason to, to not play it if you're, uh, if you haven't jumped in already, come and join the discord. Uh, I've seen people sounding off in chat that there's uh, a lot of, uh, back pocketeers playing that, getting together, enjoying some big team battle matches as well. So, uh, I did that once and I'd like to do it again. I'd jump on the discord and, and get sweaty with everyone. I wonder if we can, <laughs> cause we got, so, we got a, we got a busy work week. We're not going to get much else done, but maybe on the weekend we can do a I think, celebratory. I think Halo we can stream. be. 
I think we can be smart about this and like squeeze in a couple of little Halo reward sessions, even if yeah. they're not stream ones that we play with the team. I think you and I at least deserve a couple of those. <laughs> we'll work hard and then we'll be like, hit play the buzzer. And it's like, we'll play harder and we'll do a little bit of Halo in between. So there's that to look forward to as well. Uh, and finally, the last bit of news, uh, not much in terms of announcements uh, or delays either, but there was one announcement, which is uh, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, uh, which came out last year, will be coming to Switch. So there's that game, Peter, that you won't shut up about. Um, and it's really more of a Nick Boy game. So that's sure probably is. why it's in the news. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this, is yeah. the, this is the nude children. This is the in nude mechs, right? the yeah. teens in the, in the, in the mech. So I, I vaguely thought he was playing it on Switch. I don't know why I thought that. But no, I think it was on PC. And um, again, uh, that I was his kink, kinky, kinky kit. May says hi. Uh, so a kinky oh, kit. I thought if kinky you, kit was just playing into the kinky. <laughs> then yeah, 13 Sent Sentinels Aegis Room. Come to the Switch, might be for you. That is definitely a, a game for a, a kinky kit player out there as well. Um, so yeah, that is announced. But uh, other than that, that is uh, literally all the video game news that happened this week. Uh, and there is nothing, nothing else you need to know.